So if a spring pushes a lock pin into the recessed pocket. Now, here's the question I've got. We talked earlier about lock pins, if things aren't torqued down, that that lock pin can begin to wear. And at first it may wear and get a dent, so maybe it's, it's not staying completely steady. Over a period of time, it may, I've seen them shear off. I've also seen them to where they don't come out because the alignment's not right, so they just don't come out or they don't retract. And so there are assorted potential problems, which also means that if while we're driving this, and again, if you're not a scope guy and you've got the scan tool hooked up, if the information is there as to, you know, where my advancement is, where my positioning is, so on and so forth, watch this. And if it's dual overhead cam, if it's got dual, uh, dual actuators, so on and so forth, watch the offset between the two. So you can get an idea is one, maybe not keeping up with the other. Is it not doing its job? Or if it is, is it uh, either sluggish or just a little behind and get an idea of what's happening? Because that can give you a lot of input when it comes down to the diagnostic time. And one thing too, Tom, is on those that, you know, that's a chronic issue is that pin, whether it locks, engages, doesn't engage. And I think for uh, technicians out there, all of us have turned an engine over when doing repairs. And you realize when you're rolling those camshafts over, especially if the chain's disconnected and you're just doing the camshaft with the valve mm -hmm. trains in place, how violent it is when you roll over the high points in the camshaft between when you have tension and not tension and when you're just trying to line some things up. And so when you think about that actuator and that pin and knowing that these systems actually rely on that tension when it rolls over to go and stop and go and stop and go and stop to create oil pressure to even operate within the, the devices, that it also, when that pin is trying to find a home and it is engaging just under normal everything's good they do their oil changes that pin is also just a potential wear point and engaging Absolutely. disengaging or burring uh it can be one of those things that for me anytime i take one of those actuators off i put it on a white cloth uh from the shop somewhere even if it's a piece of paper that i can find because i want to see if there's little slivers of debris and same thing with a vbt solenoid when you pull that out you want to try to get that initial rush of oil along with it and get it laid down so that you can try to basically see if you're going to have a comeback because if oh, yeah. you've got stuff in that oil passage that's waiting for the new solenoid or the new actuator you're putting in i mean it doesn't matter what level of super tech you're at if that stuff's in there right it's not your problem then but if you don't let Maybe it go, later yeah, you're going to marry that thing if you don't bring it up to somebody's intention. So just one of those things is, um, you know, due diligence in, in repairing these. Be real careful and watch out for that stuff when you take them apart in order to make sure that uh, you're not marrying that car. Well, and I agree with you. I can honestly say that I used to, because I used to have to go up to the customer bathroom to get the white paper towels. And I used to do that both on VVT components and on EVAP components. Right, yeah, looking for the charcoal. Absolutely. Yep. And the white paper towels, they were only in the customer bathroom, and it was worth a few extra steps to know, okay, do I have a problem coming my way later on? Exactly. So 